Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to this Christmas Eve service. Let's begin this time together with a word of prayer. Please pray with me. We wait your coming, Lord, with eagerness and thanksgiving. Shine your true light in the corners of our hearts and in the vast wastelands of our society that we might see more clearly the glory of the creation you have come to redeem. Amen. Would you stand? Hymn 145, O come, all ye faithful, O come and let us adore him. I want you to sing it out tonight, okay? Here we go. O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Join me in responsive reading 635 in the back of your hymnal. <clears throat> in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was light, and the light was the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to the children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have You can remain seated, but take your hymnals, hymn number 128, it came upon a midnight clear. What a great song. Sing it out, okay? <clears throat> Let's sing it. It came upon a midnight clear, that
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. Hymn 136. Let's stand as we sing this great carol of the faith. The first Noel, born is the king of Israel.
Well, a great deal of preparation ensues as we draw closer to Christmas. During this time of year, we prepare our homes with green, bushy garland, strings of twinkling lights, and nativity scenes. We adorn our Christmas trees with delicate ornaments, placing them ever so carefully on each branch. We create detailed shopping lists, recording the loved ones' names, and the gifts that they deserve. And then each gift is intricately wrapped or placed in one of those attractive Christmas bags with tissue paper topped. And then we concoct these lavish meals for gatherings with our family and friends. So sufficient time and effort is given to preparing our surroundings. But what about our own preparation? Very little focus is given in preparing our hearts and our minds for the coming Christ child. So on this last night of Advent, let us concentrate on our hearts and prepare ourselves for Christmas. So at this time, you are going to receive a small round piece of cardboard and a string. So gentlemen, would you help to pass those out, please? Now, when you do receive these items, take them out of the bag, put them in your hand. You may want to spend some time unraveling the string. Prepare yourself. It's a long piece of string for a reason. The all-encompassing love of God was bound to us in the arrival of a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now begin binding your ornament by winding the string in and around the slits along the edge. And slowly, with each twisting motion, imagine God's love surrounding you as Mary and Joseph, or any parent, comforts and embraces their newborn.
Such a neat sound. Can now swap your ornament with a neighbor. Come on, Dad. And you're going to continue binding the yarn around that shape. Now it is with each other that Christ binds us. God not only bound God's self with humanity in the coming of Christ, but also joining all of God's people together with peace, with love, and with joy. We are all one, all of equal worth, and all loved. So continue binding. If you're able to come to the end of the string, you can return the ornament to your neighbor. So now let's return it, finished or not. <laughs> Sorry, we have to have a time limit. <laughs> now I want you to carefully examine the design that is created. Even turn the ornament over and look at the back, study it. The two twisting patterns are fashioned quite differently, as you are from your neighbor. Yet each of our lives are interwoven in Christ. Therefore, we must work together. We must look to each other for compassion and make sacrifices for one another, despite our imperfections. Because this has already been done for us by the binding love of God on that first Christmas. Amen.
On this Christmas Eve, we join with Christians all over the world as we gather to celebrate the birth of the one who is the light of the world. Over the last few weeks, we have lit four candles. The first was the candle of hope, reminding us of the promises God made throughout the prophets of a coming Savior. Hope is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. The second was the candle of peace, reminding all Christians that it is only by walking with God that true peace can be found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus. The third candle of joy reminds us of the message of the angels who proclaim the joyful good news of Christ's birth. Joy is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the joy we have in Christ. The fourth candle is the candle of love to remind us that Jesus is God's gift of love to us and that in him the light of love triumphs over any darkness in our lives. Love is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this candle, we celebrate the love we have in Christ. The final candle is the Christ candle. It is placed at the center of the wreath to remind us that Christ is the center of our lives. We light the Christ candle to remind us that the light of the world was born this night. People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Christ is the light shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of this wreath, we celebrate the birth of that light, Jesus Christ, into this world and in each of our hearts. Amen. The table of bread is now made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with with the poor of the world, with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table You who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and cup to offer, which has come forth from the earth and human hands have made. May we know your presence in the sharing, so that we may know your touch and presence in all things. We celebrate the life of Jesus and what he has shared among his community through the centuries and shares now with us. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves a single living act of praise. Amen. Now you may come and receive communion.
as we light the candles, let's sing this wonderful closing hymn. So verse, you are dismissed tonight.